the man who sold the Eiffel Tower twice, Victor Lustig. In this video, we will be discussing the story of Victor Lustig, the master con man who had sold the Eiffel Tower twice. The man eventually ended up in Alcatraz, which is the most secure prison on the planet, but it's important to tell his story first. But before we tell you about how his story started, we implore you to subscribe to the channel. Subscription is a great way to support this channel, and I will really appreciate it. Originally born in the modern-day Czech Republic, Victor Lustig from an early age began pickpocketing. Coming from an extremely poor background, Victor Lustig had to steal and beg in order to survive on the streets of Budapest. He graduated to burglary and finally became an expert con man. His scams caught the attention of the police and he ended up in prison for too many times in a row. This drove the importance of being subtle and suave in his craft, and lucky for him, he was a keen learner. Now he wanted to apply his craft to where he could lure rich, unsuspecting people. Like everyone else, he had learned about the land of dreams, United States. Victor would take these luxury voyages between Europe and America and would scam his way on both sides. This would be enough to make his ends meet. He had indeed become a charmer who could charm the money out of any unsuspecting person's wallet. In the 1920s, the United States was truly the land of dreams. Everybody was partying, and Victor tried his hand in fake whiskey stickers for smuggling alcohol contraband. But he was attracted towards a more lucrative idea, making money from money. Sounds confusing, does it not? Let me explain. Victor wanted to make a money printing machine. This machine would duplicate dollars. Now Victor did not manufacture a real money printing press, but he only needed to make copies, which seemed real enough. The machine would work like this. You needed to put in a real $100 into the machine, and it would print out a copy of that $100. The currency paper would be the same, except for the serial number printed on it. Victor made this idea work by getting real $100 banknotes from the bank, and then scraping off the last digit from the serial number, and then printing the same banknote with the identical serial number. This would be his fake money-making box. He would first work his clients and then gain their trust and then sell them this money-making box. The most genius aspect of this scale, nobody would complain to the police that this was a fraudulent sale, since the customers fully knew what they were getting into. Apart from one woman who pursued him relentlessly and eventually fell for his charms, they became accomplices and were ideally poised to pull off the biggest scam of the century. Victor packed up his family and began to live in Paris in 1925. He found that the Grand Eiffel Tower was only a momentary thing and that the French government wanted to tear it down and construct a world fair in it. But people of Paris had grown accustomed to it, and this put an ingenious idea into Victor's mind. Let's just sell the Eiffel Tower. He would need some help from a fellow scammer he had known for some time, Dapper Dan Collins. Victor did his research and infiltrated government bureaucracies and even forged government documents to make his business look authentic. He had some booklets about his business printed and distributed within the streets of Paris. He disguised himself as a government official and invited the leading metal scrapers of the city over. He appeared guarded and sensitive and said that this meeting could not be in public since the government did not want to declare its intent to scrape down the Eiffel Tower just yet. Victor had done his research and sold his credentials with perfect French and technical details of the Eiffel Tower. Victor sold these interesting parties by telling them about the precious materials they were going to get their hands on if Eiffel Tower was scrapped. Every party wanted to land the deal, naturally, since this was too good of a deal to miss out on. Victor had found his mark, Andre Dawson, and in order to give him the commission, he asked for a bribe from him. Andre wrote quite a handsome check, since he assumed he was dealing with another corrupt bureaucrat. The first thing Victor did was that he left for Austria, over the moon that this would be his trademark scam. But there was no news of this in the papers. Somewhat emboldened and desperate for the recognition that went in the trade, Victor went back to Paris and repeated the whole thing to a different brand of scrap metal sellers. He was lucky enough to get another big check. He was hoping that he would get away with it again, but this time the victims reported him. Victor thought it was best to leave Paris altogether. He then decided to scam the infamous Al Capone by promising him to double his money in the short while. He then returned the original money by saying that scam did not work. Al Capone gave him $5,000 for his honesty, and that was what he wanted in the first place. 
After that, Victor started his trade as a money counterfeiter, which landed him in the crosshairs of the Secret Service. He was eventually caught, and after some interesting twists and turns, eventually landed in Alcatraz, where there was no escape from. This takes us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Press the like button if you did, subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated with the latest content. See you in the next one.